Here at Space Planetarium, my name is Dean, and we're going to show you some of the capabilities of our all-new planetarium. This is a brand new dome screen. We have six laser-powered projectors, all-new audio, all-new seats. Almost everything is new except for me. I'm still old. <laughs> but at any rate, we're going to show you two clips tonight. We're going to show you a 51-second trailer for the first of the two features that we are showing beginning Friday. It's called Worlds Beyond Earth, about exoplanets. And then the second thing we're gonna show you is about the first seven minutes of our other feature, which is narrated by Neil deGrasse Tyson. It's called Dark Universe. So sit back, relax, enjoy the show. exceptional star have learned where the galaxies are, what they're made of, and how they got to be that way. We've discovered that the universe was born in fire 13.8 billion years ago. And that it's been expanding and evolving ever since. With new instruments on Earth and in space, we've begun to glimpse how much we still don't know about the cosmos. This is Neil deGrasse Tyson, and I'm here to guide you through a century of discovery about the past, present, and future of our universe. The story begins in the 1920s, when astronomers, using what was then the world's largest telescope on Mount Wilson, near Los Angeles, began piecing together our place in the cosmos. The astronomers knew that we live in a disc-shaped galaxy called the Milky Way, and that the band of light arching across the sky is our view of that galaxy from our location inside it. But their observations hadn't yet revealed whether any other galaxies existed. That changed 
When the astronomers aimed their telescope at a fuzzy patch of light in the constellation Andromeda. pulsating stars like those in our galaxy. By measuring the star's distances, they found a galaxy in its own right, far outside the Milky Way. The Andromeda Galaxy is more than two million light years from us. So we see it as it looked more than two million years ago, long before humans first walked the Earth. As they probed deeper and located many more galaxies, the astronomers were startled to see that the light from distant galaxies was always stretched out to longer, redder wavelengths, signifying that they were all moving away from us. They found that the more distant a galaxy, the faster it's moving. Cosmic space is constantly stretching carrying the galaxies with it. But there's no center to the universe. An observer in this galaxy would see the same evidence of cosmic expansion as we do. So would observers in that one there. Wherever you are, it looks as if you're at the center and everyone else is speeding away. As the universe expands, it cools. It's energy thinning out across a growing volume of space. The overall temperature of the cosmos today is only three degrees above the coldest possible temperature, absolute zero. But if we ran time backward, all that energy would be compressed into a shrinking volume of space, and the universe would get hotter. Realizing this, a few scientists calculated that the entire universe must have once been hotter than the sun. Skeptics ridiculed the idea, naming it the Big Bang Theory. But then, in 1964, two astronomers at Bell Labs in New Jersey started testing a horn-shaped radio antenna. They wanted to detect the natural radio waves produced by gas clouds in space. Instead, they encountered something they couldn't explain. Low-level energy coming evenly from all directions in the sky. Without realizing it, they had made one of the most profound discoveries in human history. Light from the Big Bang itself, released when the universe was only 380,000 years old, less than one hundredth of one percent. 